FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Hey, Adam. This is Adam. Are you having time? Thank God. I, yeah. I. You should. First of all, I should take a picture of this this button thing. What's it called? What's this this button thing it's, called? It's a button is thing. It a board? It, it's not the board. I it's don't have the board. board. I, he has the board over there. <laughs> Jamie told me what it was called one time. I was on his show, and he told me what this this call, call thing. The uh, oh, here it has a name. Telos. Oh, I'm sure that's go. not what they call it. Go. It's it's got a real name, and some of the buttons are missing. This thing looks like it's older than me. I'm not old, y'all, but it looks older than me. Okay, now Adam, because I was able to press the right buttons, and we're now live. Let's talk about this town hall. So first off, were you at the town hall that was held in Festus at Sirdike Motorsports, which is a fantastic, beautiful store that they have down there? I was. My, my Stand by. One down. correction: it's Sirdike Harley Davidson. Oh, sorry, Sirdike Harley Davidson, which is beautiful. Um, yes. And the boots were so cute. I, I had a hard time. My son had to restrain me from purchasing items. He said, you're not here to buy things, Mom. I was like, you're right, Miles. Did your dad tell you to say that? Okay. So <laughs> he he had a, a town hall there, and it was a prearranged type of a thing, not a pop-up or anything. So there was an Eventbrite thing where you could register just to make sure that you were allowed entrance, but they didn't have anybody working the door. And you attended, and I attended, and some other people we knew, Jen Ennenbach, a uh, huge tea party chick of days of old, and now, you know, blogging on the Dana radio, uh, DanaLash.com. Um, so were you hired or paid by the Kinder campaign or any campaign to be there? I was not. Um, as you know, and some of your listeners might know, uh, I'm a uh, you know, an independent citizen journalist mm -hmm. who does this of my own uh, free will. You have a day um, job. What's that? You have a day job. Yes, yes, I, I, I do day work. And mm -hmm. now uh, that's not to say that I'm uh, not uh, uh, available for hire. But uh, You are employable <laughs> in this area, but on this particular day, the day in question, yesterday, Saturday, July 16th, you were not working on behalf of any candidate or candidate's committee. No, and I haven't been this whole campaign uh, that I've been, uh, you know, uh, kind of trying to track down and expose Eric Greitens. Okay, so this um, has been of your own volition, kind of citizen journalism. As you said, you blog at sharpelbows.net, and you also work with some other companies um, doing research and, and all of that good stuff. So this is what you do, and it's not something that you were compensated for yesterday. Correct, correct. And what, and, the, and the reason you're, you're, you're bringing this up is, as soon as I walked in, uh, Eric Greitens saw me. Uh, he knows me because I've been uh, writing about his liberal record since, uh, you know, December. Uh, I've tried to interview him a couple times. Um, and uh, he instantly removed me from the, uh, the audience. I didn't say a word. He saw me. He stopped mid-speech. And said, hi, and, Adam. Uh, <laughs> and instantly, his first instinct is, lie to the people whose votes I'm trying to earn right here at this town hall and tell them that I work for Peter Kinder, which is an absolute lie. Uh, it's very easy to, to prove. All they have to do is go look at the, 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 the campaign finance reports at the Missouri Ethics Commission, uh, and you will not find my name on the payroll. So, I mean, I mean that's, he just, uh, you know, his first instinct gets to lie, which is, which is pretty sad. Um, well, you know, I, I've been doing I thought he should have let you stay. This, not I'm because, I, I, Adam, I actually thought he should have let you stay because the optics of it from where I was sitting, I was sitting far enough back that I could see the reactions and people were trying to figure out what they were seeing. And right. I, I think and he one stopped of the, his own show to, yeah. to, you know, I just was standing there with a video camera. So, well, and, it, uh, and then it, he also instantly he's, starts insulting me. Yeah. I'm despicable and just the lowest of the low and blah, 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 simply for standing there with a video camera. Well, so, and for people who hadn't ever seen you, you know, following him before or, or videotaping him before, they their instant reaction is... You were just standing there, so they weren't sure what you were going to do. And then they kind of had an interesting grouping, it, some campaign staffers, some people who work at, for Sir, Sir Dyke, Harley Davidson, and they came and kind of said, you have to go. And you asked a couple of interesting questions. He did not respond. But I thought if he'd allowed you to stay until you were actually disruptive, it would have been much more effective because as an elected official, especially as governor, you're going to have people not just oppose you, but be very upset with you over policy decisions and legislative, you know, things you refuse to sign into law, 
things. You sign into law. It's a constant process of appeasing some people, pleasing some people, totally angering other people, and having other people ignore you for the entire time you're in office. And so it it's something that you have to learn how to manage. And it to me was it's kind of it's the thing that people have been saying, which is Mr. Greitens is not a politician at all. Not only is he not a career politician, he's never been elected. One of the things that happens when you get elected, let's say, to school board like I was, is that you have to knock doors. And you get battle-hardened to people's reactions because you knock the doors and some people slam the door in your face. Some people insult you and slam the door in your face. Some people are sweet and invite you in. But no matter what, you're going to get a lot of that until you get to a place where you're really able to handle it and i thought that wasn't the right way to handle it yesterday with you even though he has previous experience with you it's a part of the campaign process right and you know it was a town hall i had every intention of uh you know being quiet until question time and then trying to ask him a legitimate question but uh that didn't happen i mean if my mere presence distracts him so much that it takes him off of his speech to have me removed how is he going to fight the democrats you know, I mean, because <laughs> it'll be his turn to answer to the protesters. It's coming. Right. I mean, you know, this this uh, this guy is a uh, uh, he's out of nowhere. He endorsed my my favorite thing to talk about is how he endorsed Mayor Slay in 2013. Um, and then he wants to talk about how uh, he wants to hand out ISIS hunting licenses. Well, you know, Mayor Slay is the one that wants to bring all the uh, Syrian refugees to St. Louis. You helped them put put in the office. Now we need. Now we might need those ISIS hunting licenses, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's so much that I could say about that. And, you know, I'm, I'm vehemently opposed to resettlement of refugees in the United States. But I also, also, also I, there's another way to do Gitmo it. And, and bring the Gitmo people to, to uh, you know, to our soil as well. So, we I mean, we have some issues. But uh, one good thing came out of it, Adam. I was able to ask him a couple of questions, and I was able to get him to agree to come on the program. So I'll be working on doing that. Until then, I hear there's another town hall coming up. I won't make you say on the air whether or not you're going to be there, but let's chat offline. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a whole schedule out there, so I, I, I may be, uh, I, I may be around every corner. You know, uh, like I said, uh, you know, he instantly goes to you work for Peter Kinder. You're, you're, it's my opponent. You're attacking me. Blah blah blah. And you know, like I said, you and you know a lot of the Tea Party, uh, you know, faithful here in St. Louis that listen to your show, uh, they know I've been around for that long. Um, and if Eric Greitens uh, wasn't busy being a Democrat operative this whole time. Uh, he might know that, too. But, you know. Well, you know, I recommend anybody who doesn't know who Adam Sharp is to go to sharpelbows.net. Also, follow him on Twitter. He's at Busket Nuts. Just, just follow me on Twitter, and then you'll see he's in my Twitter timeline right now. You can follow him. And you want to keep up with him because he's always the first person on the scene. And a lot of his work ends up at great places like the Gateway Pundit and DanaRadio.com. And so it's just it's the good thing for you to do is to keep up with him. And you should know who he is so you don't mistake him for a campaign operative when he's not being paid. That's just my advice to you. Thanks for coming on the show, Adam. Thank you. Also, uh, like uh, Sharp Elbows on Facebook. Check yes, Sharp Elbows on Facebook. Me. Absolutely. You can see the video of uh, me getting tossed out yesterday there. Yeah, it's right there. It's it's a good video. I took it. So, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> talk to you later, Adam. Thanks, and Bob. Thanks. I almost called you Dana. I'm no, sorry. I'm Stacy. Stacy. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Stacy. <laughs> Get more at 971talk.com.